In the last section, we installed Cert Manager into our Kubernetes cluster. We're now going to briefly discuss exactly what we have to create to integrate Cert Manager into our project and get it working the way we expect. All right, so a couple diagrams here. All right, here we go. So in this diagram, at the very center is Cert Manager. As you just saw, when we installed it, it created a deployment, which in turn created a pod. There is also a service account and a cluster role binding in there as well, which essentially gave that pod the ability to manipulate our cluster and create different resources inside of it. So Cert Manager by itself, you can really just think of as essentially being a pod that is going to reach out to our cluster and kind of mess around with things. And then at some point in time, it's going to set up a route handler to respond to the Let's Encrypt verification request. Now, in order to get Cert Manager working the way that it expects, there are two different objects that we have to create with two different config files inside of our project. So these are two types of objects that we're going to create in the same way that we've created many other objects before. We'll talk about the issuer first over here on the right-hand side. The issuer is going to be a config file that's going to tell the Cert Manager how to reach out to a certificate authority and obtain a certificate. So in our case, we are using a certificate authority, or essentially an entity who issues certificates of Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt publishes some public APIs and API addresses to access those out for you to read very easily. So we're going to create this issuer object that says essentially we want to use Let's Encrypt, and here's the address to the API to use to initiate this entire exchange process. So that's the purpose of the issuer. It's just telling Cert Manager where to go to attempt to initiate this verification process. The reason that we create this in an object is that Cert Manager is set up to allow you to define several different issuers. And even if you're using Let's Encrypt, you might want to have more than one issuer. For example, with Let's Encrypt, you get the ability to connect to a staging server or essentially kind of a practice version of Let's Encrypt. So for example, if you're not sure that this entire flow is going to work the way that you expect, you would access the staging version or essentially the practice version of Let's Encrypt before eventually moving over to the real production version of Let's Encrypt when you eventually want to get your certificate. So that's why we are able to create multiple issuers. Now for us, I'm pretty confident that everything is going to work correctly the first time, maybe. So we're not going to create multiple issuers. We're going to create just the one, and we're going to go directly to Let's Encrypt production the first time around. Honestly, if you use staging, that staging workaround with Nginx ingress like we are, life actually gets more confusing than you would think. So it's kind of better to just access the production version of Let's Encrypt the first time around, rather than trying to use the staging version and then flip over to production later on. Now the other object that we need to create, again with a config file, is going to be something called a certificate. The certificate is going to have some information that details the exact nature of the certificate that we want to obtain. So whenever you get a TLS certificate, such as the one I'm using or the one that draw.io uses, which is this, this diagramming tool that I am using right now, if you look at the certificate right here, you'll see that it has some information in the details section, like who draw.io is, so it looks like it's issued by Cloudflare. There's some other information on here about location and issued by blah, blah, blah. Essentially, there's a lot of information tied to the certificate. So the purpose of this certificate object file or the config file is to say, here is the domain name that we want to use for the certificate. It'll also have some information about maybe subdomains that we want to register under the certificate as well. And just in general, it's going to describe the nature of the certificate that we want to get. The certificate is also going to define a Kubernetes secret. Remember, we use a secret to store secret information. Now the certificate gets a little bit relevant later on. So let's continue walking through this flow. So we're going to create the certificate and the issuer, and then we're going to not necessarily feed them into the cert manager. The cert manager is actually going to automatically see that we have created a certificate and an issuer. Once it sees that both of these have been created, it's then going to initiate that exchange process with Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is going to eventually issue a certificate. So once that cert manager gets the certificate from Let's Encrypt, it then needs to store it somewhere inside of our Kubernetes cluster. And that's the purpose of the secret that got created over here by the certificate. So just to be clear, you and I are not going to create the secret in the same way that we did per previously. 
So we're not going to run kubectl create secret or anything like that. We're going to instead put an entry into the certificate configuration file that says, hey, certificate, when you get created, you should make a secret called something, something, something. And the secret will be created for us automatically. Now, once we get that certificate and store it inside the secret, the last thing we'll have to do is reconfigure our Nginx ingress. So we're going to make a little change to that configuration file for our ingress, and we're going to tell it, hey, you should now start serving up HTTPS traffic. And by the way, here is a secret that is holding the certificate that you need to use. So that's pretty much the overview of what we have to do. We have to create the certificate, the issuer, and then we have to do a little bit of a reconfiguration on our Nginx ingress. So let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back in the next section, we'll get started by working on our issuer config file to start. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.